Mix It With Mike, plugin of the week is the Waves Abbey Road Chambers. The Abbey Road Chambers plugin is the latest in a collaboration uh, between Waves and Abbey Road Studios. And what they've done is they've gone about taking impulse response samples of the three chambers that exist at Abbey Road Studios, as well as the full tape delay uh, feedback system that they had specifically designed for use. Um, with this, with these chambers. Now, what's unique about this, because many studios had chambers at the time, and these go back to the 1960s, um, what was different here was the whole tape delay system that was factored into creating the reverb, and this is what really made it unique. Uh, if you're not familiar, chambers are usually, you know, small to medium-sized, very reflective spaces. Uh, in this case, there uh, is a tiled room, as you can see here, uh, with, that has columns in it. Uh, there's a mirrored room here, so all the walls have mirrors all the way around, and so that becomes very reflective. And then there's a stone room, uh, which is the smallest and the darkest of them, but each of those chambers will have a unique character and uh, a unique sound and uh, a different basic reverb time. So mostly what would happen, or the basic idea, is that you would feed a signal through a send into a speaker. You see a speaker cabinet here. Uh, the speaker would feed the sound into the room and then you would set up microphone or multiple microphones in that space to capture the reverberant energy. So if you position um, the speaker, say, into the corner or away from the wall, so it's the microphones are not pointed directly at it, or you point the microphones away, and there's a number of positions here, then what you get is mostly or a majority of reverberant energy. Now, the basics of the plugin here, you see the three different chamber uh, setups here. We have the input and output section, so you see meters and level controls, pretty straightforward. Um, the chambers are selected down here, uh, so it gives you the three different types of spaces. Um, then uh, you also, um, especially for chamber two, you have the most selections. You have two microphone uh, selections here. Uh, you have the Sheps uh, MK2HS or the, um, the uh, Neumann KM3s. So, uh, 53, excuse me. So those are available to you there. There are three different positions that you can go through here. So uh, in the room, the classic position is what they show here, uh, pointed towards the columns that you see there on the wall. Okay, here, so it's pointed away. And each space will have different options available. So you don't have a selection for microphones here, but you have a near and far uh, selection for the mirror. And for the stone room, you have the same thing, near and far selections. So depending upon uh, the setup here, you can select that. You can also select a speaker type. So you have two speakers here, the BMWs and uh, Altex speakers. So this is a bit warmer uh, sounding and um, and the BMW is a little bit more full frequency sounding. So uh, you get kind of more of like an older sound and a newer sound between the two. Um, and then uh, you can have it facing the wall or facing the room, which gives you more direct energy when it's facing the room. So you have these options available. Uh, most of the options are available in Chamber 2. Uh, this is just partly what's built into the actual setup at Abbey Road Studios. Now, where all of this comes uh, unique here is with the whole Steed system. So uh, Steed itself stands for Send, Tape, Echo, Echo, Delay. Okay, and so the double echo meaning that there's a feedback loop, and there's actually a signal flow here. Uh, so if you click on this up in the toolbar, it's a, a, a new thing here that's uh, added in here for the Abbey Road chambers. Uh, so what you have is the direct signal because there's a wet dry mix, which is down here. Um, but when you come in, uh, essentially they've modeled uh, the buffer amp here. Um, then it goes into a tape delay. Uh, the output uh, splits the signal. And so you can now run the feedback uh, through filters. So this is the whole feedback system that feeds it back into the delay. So you can filter it so that each delay or each succeeding delay uh, is filtered frequency-wise a bit more. Uh, you can apply uh, drive and modulation. I'll show you that sort of stuff. And then the output continues here into the chambers. So there are filters uh, which take the overall delay, and you could filter that. So this, the filters that you see over here are just for the feedback. This is for the overall signal feeding into the chambers. You have microphone and speaker selection, uh, the reverb mix, you know, for, uh, um, uh, you know, level control, which you see here, and, and then you have the output. So this will give you, like, the whole basic signal flow, um, which is great, so you don't have to dig through the manual. So where we have the whole delay feedback section, so the first 
um, signal is going to come in here. You have a drive control and a modulation control. Okay, so this is determining the level of the um, delay signal um, or how hard it hits the tape. So you can get some saturation there and also some modulation, which is some movement, which goes beyond what normal uh, tape, you know, um, fluctuation in speed and, and level or gain might be. So, uh, which is uh, a bit more random. So this is uh, more of a modulation that you can go in that could be pretty radical. Um, you have a pair of delays here, which can be linked together. Uh, you can also use the sync, so you can put in musical values for the timings. You can unlink them to separate them out into different settings. Um, then you have the filter section. So the filters here are for the feedback. This determines the amount of feedback from off to maxed out. You can see the red there where it's going to continue for a more extended length of time. Um, and the filters here, basically what they call a top cut is a low pass filter. Uh, and it's about 24 dB per octave. So it's a pretty hard uh, cutoff. You have a mid-range uh, boost attenuation, which is uh, uh, set at 3.5K. Um, and then uh, you have a base cut here, uh, which works at 12 dB per octave. The whole output of this section with saturation and modulation and all the other stuff feeds into this filter section here. So you have the RS-127 EQ, uh, gives you three frequency selections and boosts or attenuations. Uh, you can go in between, not just to the fixed settings, although you can click on them and go to them that way. And you have a top cut and a base cut. Now, uh, both, of the, both of the cuts on this end are 24 dB per octave. So it's uh, pretty steep filters for this type of stuff. If you want to avoid this altogether, you can just turn the delay section off and the signal will go straight to the chamber. Okay, so you have that available to you. And if you don't want to filter, you could turn the filter. So this also gives you a quick AB on off for all of that. Uh, then you have a reverb uh, gain control and a wet dry mix um, here. So you can, uh, if you place it, uh, on the insert of, like, say, a vocal or something like that, then you have the mix controls here. So I set this up as a stereo send return configuration, um, but it can work mono to stereo, stereo to stereo, uh, all of the, the uh, basic configurations work there. Once you're inside the plugin, you have the stereo delays. Um, so effectively, it becomes stereo on that end of things with the delays, even though you see the speaker's uh, position here in a singular uh, visually. Um, let's uh, kind of run through some sound through it, just so you can kind of get a little setup here. Um, I set up something here, which is just with the different chambers here and some drums. And uh, so let's just play a little bit here and uh, see what we have. So this is just with a very um, like short delay here. It's uh, the fastest delay if I take the sync uh, with the with the sync on. So that's like 18 millisecond delay. Uh, I can bypass this. And the filters are basically flat. Oh, there's actually a boost at 10k here. So let, let's just uh, let's just keep. Um, turn this off so we could just hear the raw rooms just as they are and go through some of the options just to give an idea. And what's cool about this is as you actually go through the different options and kind of work with them, there's also uh, what they call a time X here, a time multiplier. So for example, if this is too long, I can shorten it. Or if I want to go to the stone room and make it a little bit longer, Let's 
play with the stone room a little bit here, and and uh, just because it's it's the one that is the warmest sounding of them. And let's just see how working with the filters here, maybe we can brighten this up a little bit. So just with the filters there, you get a very natural sounding, you know, EQ. This is a bell curve uh, filter uh, with the gain controls. Just happen to click on uh, some of the settings there. But you see how you could take a space there and uh, kind of brighten it up and also change the time. So there's a lot of flexibility just from the very basics of it. And then you can essentially use this as a pre-delay with a feedback control. I'll show you how this becomes a little bit more effective, when, especially when you get to things like vocals and stuff like that. Uh, but let's go back to the chamber here for a second and shorten this. And, and then just go through some of the different options here. Okay, so um, what we have is the different speakers and different positions. So let's start with the two different speaker types just so you can hear the difference in sound. So you can hear how that has like a, a, a very different tone there. Let's uh, switch to a wall position because that was feeding into the room. Obviously, the Altec has like some kind of a horn system or something to it that, that gives it a, a, a very different character. This is obviously the BMW is a more like full frequency flat monitor system in this particular case. Uh, but here, facing the wall gives us more dense reverb, uh, which is maybe what we want. And then we have the two different uh, microphone types and three different positions. So this is the classic position, and you see the three different microphones actually pointed at these columns here but let's uh, point them at the wall and just kind of go through the three different options here. And that's with the MK2Hs. Now, the differences between the two mic sets are not as big, you know, certainly not as the speakers, but let's hear the difference here. Actually, a bigger difference than I recall. So it may vary between them, but this, uh, these, the, um, the MK2Hs have more body to them. And as you go through, you know, each option, you know, there are near and far uh, setups here. Uh, as there is with the stone room, so if I go back to a setting over here. So depending upon what it is that you're, you know, that you're kind of blending the sound for any one of these three chambers gives you a lot of options. So the drums expose certain characteristics that may make this particular setup sound the best or your favorite out of the lot. But let's let's now take and, and bring this in. So I'm going to bring my uh, pre-delay here and my uh, feedback off.
So you can see even just with that pre-delay, you can add you know, a lot of depth. And if I unlink them, I can actually take now in, if I use that as sort of a, a, a marker, change the pre-delays for both sides. And widen out uh, the reverb there. So, uh, ooh, well, all right, so if I link those, maybe should have just gone to the undo. All right, so if I go back here, So you can see how much you can uh, spread or widen the imaging. Now, it, when you get to dealing with uh, some of the feedback, the drums are probably not gonna be the best uh, for that, although you can drive it to add some thickness. So that's just a little tape saturation there. Again, you can turn that on or off and the modulation is probably gonna be wacky, but let's see. In some weird way, it could be kind of cool, but, uh, um, you know, probably not appropriate for a straight ahead rocker like this one. Um, okay, so you see there's a lot of flexibility and a lot of tone of character and different things that you can change. Let's go to a, a different example here, um, one where I can isolate out a, a lead vocal so we can hear something that's maybe a little bit more appropriate for um, uh, working. Let's see if I can call it up here. We're working with the uh, feedback and the delays. So this is probably going to be pretty loud. Let's just see. You went your way And I went mine Drifting slowly down the road Walking the line and all these cars are passing me by And all these dreams, they seem like a blur So what I have here is uh, um, uh, just a quick uh, delays here. Uh, this is, might be something I would set up as like a kind of a uh, delay time where you have, you know, uh, an eighth and a dotted sixteenth just based on the pace of the vocal. That would probably make the most sense. And then, um, you know, a faster time. In other words, if the, the vocal was slower, I might do dotted eighth along with that. And that kind of creates some kind of musical um, value to the delays or to the echo. So you have the tape slap and then that feeds into the reverberant engine here. And I can tighten this up to make them sort of like soft echoes. You went your way and I went mine. Drifting slowly down the road Walking the line And all these cars are passing me by And all these dreams, they seem like a blur Ah, uh, just like a blur Running out of time, running out of reasons Running out of money, don't know what I was thinking so here uh, with this, I can put a little drive in here to give it some warmth. You went your way, and I went mine. Drifting slowly down the road, walking the line. And all these cars are passing me by. And all these dreams, they seem like a blur. Right, and so I can use this as an effect, which is almost like a soft slap kind of effect, which is one way to use it. I have a little bit of a bass cut in here at uh, 243, and then a uh, high frequency cut here at, uh, what was that, 9.78. Okay, um, so this is just on the feedback. So as the initial delay goes through, uh, it goes through and then straight off to the chamber, but then as it feeds back, um, as the signal is driven back into the tape delay um, and each recycling one will go through this stage of filters and then get progressively uh, smaller sounding. Um, 
you know, based on frequency response. But I can also, uh, I hit play here, so I thought. So um, I can also take this and kind of uh, move the reverb time out here. And so let's, let's kind of move our setup out here. Uh, maybe send this one out to face the wall. So we got a bit more reverberant energy. Let's see what we got here. You went your way, and I went mine. Dripping slowly down the road, walking the line. And all these cars are passing me by, and all these dreams they seem like a blur. Ah, uh, just like a blur. Running out of time, running out of reasons, running out of money, don't know what I was thinking. Trying to get away, trying to get back, trying to start again, trying to get back to living. Well, if it's not love, then it's not bad. I'll try to get back the best I ever had. It's, you could get into... Um you know, whatever frequency response, the different um, characteristics of the different rooms, the mic positions, and uh, dial in uh, some kind of sound. The idea, though, of the tape return feedback delayed into the chamber. And again, you know, if you want to just ignore this, you could just take the whole thing out, you know, all of the delay and the filter out or just use it as a straight pre-delay and keep it as just a straight up reverb, which would also sound great. So. You went your way, and I went mine, drifting slowly down the road, and walking the line, and all these cars are passing me by, and all these dreams, they seem like a blur, ah, uh, just like a blur. Running out of time, running out of reasons, running out of money, don't know what I was thinking. Trying to get away, trying to get back, trying to start again, trying to get back to living. Well, if it's not love and it's not bad, I'll try to get back the best I ever had. So you see how you can get, you know, just use it purely as a reverb here with a little bit of pre-delay just for separation. I kind of like this stone one uh, in particular for this song where it's tighter, shorter reverb. It just gives you an ambient, uh, you know, energy to kind of pull the vocal out of the speaker. You went your way. And I went mine, drifting slowly down the road, and walking the line. And all these cars are passing me by, and all these dreams, they seem like a blur. Ah, uh, just like a blur. Running out of time, running out of reasons, running out of money, don't know what I was thinking. Trying to get away, trying to get back, trying to start again, trying to get back to living. Just a, a few ideas here uh, we could hear. I'm not sure what uh, what mess this is going to end up being in the context of the overall mix because uh, they didn't design it that way, but what the hell. Let's just have a listen and see what happens. You went your way And I went mine
obviously the delays would would be a little bit too much but uh um very cool plugin um and uh chambers are are you see them sort of in reverb programs digital reverb programs and they think there's a big misunderstanding about what that means or what they are and um if you've ever seen one sometimes they're very small um it's just extremely reflective um, and uh, sometimes there are much larger spaces. just depends what the studio uh, had available at the time, but these are real true acoustic reverbs. Um, and so there's a part of that which is very cool in that it was just designed to be an overly reflective space that uh, for the sole purpose of adding effect onto something where historically things primarily went um, by microphone placement, how far the microphone was, or if you had multiple microphones and you would mix the effect in as you were recording because there weren't enough tracks but as you know history sort of um, developed multi-tracking technology and mixing became a bigger part uh, things like this uh, started to become more important to the audio engineer um, and also as a creative tool for making things and certainly the tape uh, feedback system that uh, Abbey Road designed for this also made it extremely unique very cool plugin. Uh, really excited about this one. Um, and just the impulse responses for these different spaces all sound great. Uh, if you start digging into it and putting it on different instruments uh, for drums, vocals, or uh, guitars, or whatever, you'll find a lot of really amazing uses for it. Um, really great one. And um, so uh, that's a, a wrap on this video. And uh, it's Mixing with Mics, plugin of the week, Waves, Abbey Road Chambers. <laughs>